Hello everybody, welcome back. This will be my June Rewind. Welcome to July. And the earth is getting hotter and trying to cook us all. Because the heat index was ridiculous yesterday. Ridiculous. But I have my notes for the topics that appealed to me this past month. So let's get into it. YouTube. They're the new interface for YouTube on Xbox 360. I don't own the X1, so I can't tell you anything about that. But it, you can go down to your subscribers and it'll show you all their videos without leaving like the home page. So I thought that was really cool. I think the background's blowing. Feels like we're moving in 3D here. And I don't know if anyone else experienced their like button being messed up. It could have just been on the Xbox. Because I had liked videos and then I had to go. And you know, I base my viewing on if I've already liked it. And then I move on and some of the videos I had to hit like again. But they were already in my like a uh, playlist from a month or two ago so I don't know what was up with that okay I have a question how do you feel about unsubscribing from other youtubers who no longer post content who haven't posted content in over a year because I have several people some people have just I guess they were trolls too because that's how people have lost view counts and subscribers because YouTube has gone through and gotten rid of all the troll accounts or what they considered a troll account. I think it was just somebody who never came back. <laughs> some of them. So they have deleted some things and that's why people have lost viewer count and subscribers. Because they sent that in an email. I don't know if everybody gets the emails. The emails I get from YouTube are very sporadic. But please let me know in the comments below how you feel about unsubscribing from people that have not been a part of YouTube in the creative sense in over a year. Because I used to follow a lot of people, you know, that I really enjoyed, but then they just fell off and I hope they're well. But, you know, they fell off. All right, for TV, I watched Trusted on FX. It was about the John Paul Getty the third, his kidnapping, the fact that he actually made up the plan to be kidnapped because he wanted money, and then the kidnapping went very much awry. It wasn't even, like, interesting I only loved Hilary Swank and Brandon Fraser's characters. And I know some people didn't enjoy his Texas um, private investigator, I think he was. But I really enjoyed him. He actually livened up some things because it was very sedate storytelling. And the... And um, Donald Sutherland played John Paul Getty Sr. He, uh, they, he's old Paul, there's old Paul, big Paul, little Paul, because they're all John Pauls. Kind of like George Foreman named all his boys George. But Trust It on FX was, it was a very slow story. It wasn't very entertaining. I did enjoy Hilary Swank. Like, even the kid who played like John Paul the third there was something like he wasn't charismatic enough but then I learned like Balthazar Getty is his son he played in oh home again once and again oh, it was the Callista Flockhart and Sally Field show on ABC about the family from Ojai who had a vineyard. That was a really good show. I enjoyed that. 
the guy who plays in The Americans, Reese, he was in that show too. Um, Marlon is back on NBC. It's a summer show. I still miss the Carmichael show, but NBC and Gerard Carmichael, they, you know, they met at an, they hit an impasse and the show, he wanted off the show and they didn't know how to work a show without him in it. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Trial and Error is coming back on the 19th. If you haven't seen the first season, I think it's on Hulu, but don't quote me it's about a small town and it's like wacky zany it's a comedy john lithgow was the defendant in the first season this season is going to be christian chenoweth oh i'm so excited i loved her in oh my god the pie maker come on Lori. it's it was on abc as well the pie man, the pie maker. What? Dead again? I will write it below. I, oh, I'm so mad. And I will do that for the other show too. The pie maker. It had Chai McBride. He like touched people. If he, if you were dead and he touched you, you came back to life. But if he touched you again, you were dead for good. Ugh, that makes me mad that I can't remember it. Music-wise, I've been loving the song from Big Boy called All Night. I will try to see if there's a video on YouTube and I will link it. I really, it's just like a really nice song, son. It's just a really nice, fun summer song. It's got a good beat. It's got, you know, good lyrics. It's just all about having fun. I think I'm hitting the <laughs> background. And... I just really enjoy the song. Drake's new album dropped Scorpion. It's like 25 songs. There's like a side A, side B type of thing. I actually really enjoyed it. I'm really enjoying albums that I can listen all the way through. And the songs, Emotionless is my favorite song off the album. Eight out of 10, Summer Games. March 14th and then we all know God's Plan and Nice For What. Those were two singles he had previously released that are in heavy rotation. Well especially on my Pandora so let's see movie news. March 1st 2019 the last movie in the trilogy for How to Train Your Dragon is coming out. I'm so excited. This one is The Hidden World, so we find another Night Fury. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. I love those movies. I've seen the second one in theaters. I don't know that I saw the first one. And I still haven't finished the sixth season of How to Train Your Dragon on Netflix. I think that's the end of it, like it was with Puss in Boots. That you got six seasons and Puss in Boots did not end the way I thought it was going to end. Like, you're a cartoon, bruh. Like, I need goodness. So I have a couple favorite items this month, which is exciting. I don't, you really have favorites sometimes. But this one is an oldie but goodie. It's plastic. It has teeth here, plastic teeth, and then it has like a pick side here and you use it to clean out your hairbrush like the boar bristles or you know natural bristle brushes and they will go in there and pull the hair out and this side you can pull it up I got this at Sally's if I can find it I will definitely link it but I love this it it cleans your brushes in seconds you don't have to worry about trying to dig it out with a rat tail comb so that's the first favorite. The second favorite is from Tree Hut. This is their Shea Sugar Scrub in Coconut Lime. It smells amazing. And there is no oily residue. No oily residue. 
I hate oily residue from scrubs, but it's such a big container. You get 18 ounces. And this was like $8 at Ulta. I know you can buy them at like TJ Maxx, probably Marshalls. Uh, Courtney K. She loves these scrubs. She talks about them all the time. I am really glad that I picked them up. And they're such a great price. Because I was going to get the Ulta ones. Because at the time they were like, buy two, get one free. And the, you know, money wise, it worked out great. But you get so much more in this, in these Tree Hut scrubs for such a great price. All under $10. So definitely check them out and you can smell them, touch them in Ulta's. And then I've been in love with sweet tarts. Like anything sweet tarts, I want. And the more sour it can be, the better. I just saw some like sour chewy ones when I was at the grocery store today. I really, really want to buy them, but I didn't. So I just finished the box of the sweet tart hearts from Valentine's. Then I just got this big with the giant ones. I got this at the dollar store. They're the giant chewies. And then I got the roll of the tangy candies. They're harder. I enjoy sour candy. So sweet tarts have really hit the spot for me. And I've been on a sweet tarts kick. I've had the sweet tarts cherry ropes. I didn't really care for those. Those didn't have like, I thought they would be a little sour in the middle and they didn't turn out to be. So I don't want those. Some random things. I joined Fantastic Ladies on Facebook. I will have the link below. I'm so excited. Like, joining this group has just invigorated my love of panning, my love of makeup. It's because I've been feeling a little stagnant on some of the makeup that I've been using because I'm trying to finish this or at least make a really nice dent in it. And... It's just been slow going for some things. Some things I feel like should have been done, but they're not. So I'm really excited about being a part of the Fantastic Ladies and I've signed up for several panning projects that are going to start in the next few months. So I'm really, really excited about that. Let's see, ooh, I joined the Summer Reading Challenge at my local library. You have to read eight books. I've joined the adult one. So I'm reading a book right now. It's called The Blood Detective. It's for being a mystery thriller. It should be a little more enticing. It's very kind of clinical. But I guess because this is I the author... This is his first foray into novels. He, I can't remember what he used to write, but it wasn't, you know, a book. But he needs a little more passion. And then I've been very much into iced coffee. And I'm not a coffee drinker. I only want coffee in the wintertime when I can have my peppermint mocha creamer That's when I want it. And that's the only time I can get the peppermint mocha. And that was a <laughs> piece of dust. And I've just been really into coffee drinks. Drinking it right now. This one was a cold coffee brew. It's five cups of water and a cup of coffee grounds. And you stir it up and you let it sit overnight or you know, 12 hours are overnight, they said. And then you take a coffee filter and you pour it out so the grounds don't go in your drink. And the cold brew is definitely stronger than, like, when I make just regular pot of drip coffee and let it cool. So this one is very much stronger. I had to add a little more creamer to it. That's why it's so milky white. But it's tasty and I've really been enjoying it. I've been doing iced tea. I don't, sometimes I sweeten it, sometimes I don't. I don't really care. I really like a really nice, strong brewed tea on ice. Bam. I'm good to go. And makeup. 
I want to talk about the two palettes I use for the month because I do a palette every two weeks. And right now they're actually lining up where I'm doing two palettes. You know, two weeks are lining up really well. And ColourPop just came out with their Solimar. There's two different palettes. There's the corals and there's the blues. I'm not buying either one. They're beautiful, but the blue one, like they have this really beautiful like cobalt blue and then they go to like a teal and then the sea sea moss or whatever it's called sea foam green there we go but i know that's not going to work out well like the lighter the blues or greens the more problems i run into because they don't look good to me on me so i don't like them they make it difficult in life but the coral one, like the coral one speaks to me so much. Like corals and oranges speak to me so much. And looking at my palettes, dude, you own them. Stop it. I was thinking about buying the Huda, Huda, Huda Beauty uh, Coral Obsessions palette, that little nine pan one. But I stopped myself. I was like, you know, it's going to be part of her permanent collection. I don't need to have it right now. And looking at my palettes, bro, you own oranges. Stop buying them. And just FYI, your girl did buy three palettes. And I think there's some oranges. There are oranges in them. Like, I love oranges. I got to stop. I have only two eyeballs and so much face. Now, I used two palettes this month. And they both annoyed me. For different reasons. The first one is the Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette. It comes in a cute tin. I really love the packaging of it. When I first got it, I didn't buy it for myself. It was a gift. So a gift. I Gifts are, you know, a hard thing to get rid of. I'm not getting rid of this palette, but it was very close very very close like this purple is so pretty but it gave me fits and this palette you don't need an eye base because I use a base from the subculture subculture stupid I use a base from be a bombshell and submissive and it's just a like goldy color but it, you know it doesn't really add much but it holds my shimmers or glitters really nicely it's just a really nice base you know it's pretty much close to my skin tone maybe a little lighter but it just holds the things but these shadows do not like it like I tried this purple and it's you know it's a really pretty purple it's a little dirty purple but you know it's purple and it got so dark. I was so mad. And I don't like Talk Derby to me. This dark purple, purpley black with purple glitter in it. I don't like that shade at all. Tempting is okay because it's more of a gold-based black. I do love these two pinky peaches. Just peachy and candy peach. I like those. The browns are good. Like, I really like this palette when I first used it. And right now, I'm not so crazy about it. But I'm not ready to let it go yet. I'll play around with it again the next go round. But I'm not crazy about this palette anymore. It still smells peachy, so that's not the problem. I just... I think it's because I'm stubborn right now I'm using my products in a way that I want to use my products and I want them to work for everything I own and this palette says I don't need all that and I'm like bruh I want all that and <laughs> so we're having technical difficulties with each other now the last palette I bought it because I wanted it it's, it's a such a pretty story color story okay 
Like, look at that. Like, how is that not gorgeous? Like, it works. You can make tons of looks. You get bright, pretty colors. You get some shimmers. You got really nice mattes. Like, it's such a great color story. That's That's been the password for a, what the last month story color story color good story color but I used it for two weeks you can really tell where I used it in the shimmers and this palette is the Kat Von D 10th anniversary if I can find my receipt I will take it back I still have a few I have like three weeks to find it because I don't know how it works Sephora and JCPenney's if I don't have the receipt because I bought it in store if you know please let me know in the comments below but I own these colors do you know how mad I am that I bought this 52 freaking dollars for a palette that I already own the colors to it that some of this stuff is not great like bruh this is my subculture palette, which I love. I have used it. You can tell I have loved it. Can you see that we have some similar colors happening? That dirty blue going up there at the top. The green right here. The peachy is in New Dawn, right? Or Roxy, I'm sorry. Roxy you got that orange I'm sorry the orange is Roxy Dawn is that peachy you got the brown you know that's a really nice chocolate brown this is a really nice milk chocolate like I have like this is so close like I'm so annoyed at myself for not paying attention more and then the blue is not as great as the blue in the metal matte palette. The green and the gold shimmers are the best. This two-tone one, I've it's a blue based, it's supposed to be blue brown. Like it's nothing amazing and it has such a hard time applying you have to put I had to put down this dirty blue to make that even show up the purple oh my god dude so much work went into that purple so much work this right here is a peachy peachy orange it's pinky orange and it shows up you know orangish but it doesn't show up like that on the eyes. It doesn't. I have resorted to using it in the crease. Just to, if the color is too dark, lighten it up. But it's not going to lighten it up too much. It's going to give it a little shimmer and blend out a little more. That's how I've been using it. I like the red, that orange, but I have it in another palette. That yellow, I have that in the palette from what you call them subculture there's a yellow right there bruh right there edge like oh I'm annoyed and if you want really good glitters moon dust glitters from urban decay I know they're like $22 a piece but try to catch them on sale or you could buy the moon dust palette like I love the moon dust palette I mean I don't love all the colors there's like a couple that give me troubles but like if you want good glitters and like the green that gold glitter you're gonna find in all kinds of palettes the green glitter may be a little harder but coastal scent sells one okay this blue is not great I'm trying to figure out which finger was clean like it looks really pretty there But it's not the greatest pigmentation it required a little work 
like it's not as great as the one in her metal matte palette like I'm just I'm not impressed I was more impressed from pictures or because I really do like her formulation of other things but this formulation is not the best and I will be talking about Kat Von D and her Instagram statement about vaccines if that's not something you enjoy you are free to leave this video now I know it's been like a month since Kat Von D has come out as an anti-vaxxer so she will not be vaccinating her child she went on a whole little paragraph or so rant on her Instagram about how she always feels prosecuted against for da 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 da, -da. like her dad's not happy she using a doula and not going to a hospital people you know I guess talk crap about her because she's vegan like who are you hanging out with that they're crapping on you for being vegan like this is the year 2018 no one cares that you're vegan no one cares if you're vegetarian like those are things that are in the world they are common I know some restaurants are slow on the uptake but there are places for you to go, you know, foods to eat. I, oh. And then she put down that she was an anti-vaxxer. She wasn't going to vaccinate her child. She has no idea if her child, you know, would require. I, this is something that pisses me off completely. And... It's because it's she doesn't understand herd immunity. She doesn't understand protecting herself, her child, because I have to assume she was vaccinated as a child. You know, most of us were. You know, this is a more recent thing where, like, they're loud and proud about being anti-vaccines. Vaccines are not harmful. They are helpful. There is science, medical data to back this up. And to be blatant and brazen and say, oh, I'm not going to do it, regardless of the effects. <laughs> Vaccines have caused certain harmful deadly illnesses to be eradicated and because people have decided oh we don't need to put this in our child this isn't helpful and I, and that one stupid article that the man was paid seven hundred thousand dollars to write about vaccines being linked to autism like we should be able to throw tomatoes at him all day long He, and people have taken this one, one, one piece and taken it as gospel fact that vaccines are, are connected to autism. That's not how this works. And autism isn't new. We have a name for it. We have a name for Asperger's. We have a name for all these things, for bipolar, you know, you're not just manic. You're not depressive. You could be bipolar. You could be one end. You could be the other end. There are names for things now because we have advanced as a society to study, to learn more. That a lobotomy doesn't fix every freaking thing. And so that's how we have hit here. You know... Things that happen there are genetic mutations. They are brain chemistry. You know, it's chemical imbalances. Things that medicine is learning more about, more to help, more to give you relief so you don't suffer needlessly and it, like... 
this is something that pisses me off. And I live in a state, the state of Michigan, who I thought, you know, we were, you know, we knew vaccines were good for us. I really wish I still had that newspaper. It showed the states and freaking Michigan all around this stupid mitten. There was red and orange for all these places where people don't vaccinate their kids. And if you've paid attention, it's the affluent who aren't vaccinating their kids. It's the affluent. Because it's like, here in Michigan, it was like in Traverse City. I knew about Traverse City. I knew there was like this little small community. I didn't realize like this more south you came all around the sides of the mitten that these people weren't vaccinating their kids. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? I am vaccinated. I have everything I ever needed in my childhood when those vaccines were available. We now have a new vaccine for chicken pox. Kids don't have to have it. Isn't that amazing? Like, I wish that was around when I was a kid. I've had chicken pox twice. Five and twelve. Five was okay. Twelve was the harder of the two. And chicken pox. I will tell you about the twelve. When I was twelve, that was 1996. I have told you how old I am. My sister got it from a little boy she went to school with. We went to Alabama for Easter. Easter, one week, we took out the whole family. The whole freaking family got chicken pox. From a kid from north of them. Took it all the way to the south. The whole freaking town, because we were all related like in this little town. We went everywhere. This was the first time down there as, you know, functioning, talking, talking kids. Talking to other people, hanging out with other people, going to the Easter parade downtown, you know, on their main street. Bro, took out the whole freaking town with chicken pox. But there was there one week and took out the whole freaking town. Vaccines are helpful. They prevent you know, global, community-wide infections. There was a special on PBS from Nova about vaccinations. PBS, you know, they are very <laughs> down the road. They don't pick sides. They tell you the facts and leave it at that. Like, I love PBS very much. But they talked about a Hasidic Jewish man who had gone on a mission or you know he had gone out of the country to help someone else in another country you know another community of people he came back home he wasn't sick in two weeks in two weeks that man had taken out his entire Hasidic community because they are not vaccinated for religious reasons he took out his community in two weeks he was a carrier. He didn't get infected, but he infected everybody else. And nobody understood how these people all got whatever they got. I can't remember and I don't want to say something like, oh, you're a liar. You don't even know what you're talking about. So I don't want to say because I can't remember. I can tell you that honestly. I do not remember what it was, but it was something that wasn't very common in the United States. Then they talked to a man who has a five-year-old kid who was going to kindergarten, so excited. Spent most of his life in a hospital. He has a compromised immune system, meaning he cannot be vaccinated. So he requires herd immunity to protect him. And in the Bay Area in California, you know, they don't have to vaccinate. They can say no. Not for religious reasons. 
not for medical reasons, just because they don't want to. So this little boy, his father has to send him to school every day, hoping his kid doesn't catch something because you chose not to vaccinate. It is repugnant. It, I'm so furious. It is irresponsible not to protect yourself and others from harm. Because you choose, I don't want to do this just because. Not because of something factual. Not because of your religion. Not because of medical reasons. It's disgusting. And I will be getting the shingle shot when I turn 50 because I've had chicken pox twice, like I said. Do you know how many people would have loved that? Old people. I had a family member who got shingles every time you turned around. And shingles is not fun. It is that rash. It's red. It's, it hurts. You don't want to wear clothes. You don't want to be touched. It is harmful. It is hurtful. And to have these advances in medical technology, in this modern freaking society, and you choose not to do it just because. All right, you guys. So this month's video definitely ended on a very strong PSA soapbox moment. It is something that infuriates me. And I hope you learn more about vaccines and how helpful they are. Oh, and I guess I should say Michigan has had quite the influx of hepatitis A. Hepatitis A. All right, so this, I gotta stop. This is gonna make me mad. Oh, and also on the Kat Von D note, I will not be supporting her. I will not be giving her my money. And there's an article, I will link it if it's still live about three instances of her anti-Semitism. And, you know, the first time is an offshoot. Second time is a coincidence. Third time, that is a freaking pattern. So, I, I'm, mm, I'm done with Kat Von D. So, whew, that was my June Rewind. I've been trying to get this off my chest forever. Every time I think about it, it makes me mad. All right, you guys, I want to thank you guys for viewing. If you enjoyed, please hit that thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy, you can hit that thumbs down. I don't care. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I would love to have you. I don't know that I will go on many rants like this again. But when the mood strikes you, the mood strikes you. And you have to hold firm in your beliefs. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. I may be mad there. Oh my God. And if you have subscribed, thank you very much. I want you guys to be safe. Be well. Peace. Please be safe on this Independence Day week. Because July 4th is right smack dab in the middle of the week. So people were either off last weekend or they're off this weekend coming. Or maybe they only got Wednesday off. <sighs> Bye. Because I was trying to buy the Huda, Huda, oh my God. I was thinking about buying the Huda, Huda, oh my God. I was thinking about buying the Huda, 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 Huda. Okay.